there were a lot of people who thought that the Milwaukee Brewers could pull off some major upsets and maybe even get to the World Series. But on the first day of the postseason, Arizona said to the Brewers, hold my beer. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. There's my, wait, where's my lower third? There it is. You can call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer. Emmy-nominated television producer. You enunciate Sully, who has been a baseball podcaster for the last, oh, God, five, uh, ten years or something. It's been five years here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it is your team every day. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and follow us and follow all the great shows of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're going to be hearing from two of the hosts on today's show. Our friend Miller Thomas is back, not Miller Fillmore. He was president. Chuck Freeman from Lockdown Brewers is going to be back because we're going to be talking a little bit about the Brewers and the D-backs. Talk about the game that happened today and some of the thoughts for the postseason that both Miller and Chuck recorded before the start of the series. Follow us again at Lockdown MLB Pods, Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. It's Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. So yeah, the Brewers had the pitching. The Brewers had some of the experience. The Brewers look really, really good. And I'm not going to lie to you. I picked the Brewers. I picked the Brewers to win the Wild Card Series. I picked the Brewers to upset the LA Dodgers. And I picked them to get thumped by the Atlanta Braves in the National League Championship Series. So here we are, one game into the postseason, and the Brewers on the verge of complete defeat. Say that three times fast. Uh, and things were looking great from the start. You had Bob Euchre throwing out the first pitch. And then um, Santana drove in a run for the the – um, Brewers at the you know at the start of the game in the first inning, uh, and then Tyrone Taylor hit a two-run home run in the second inning, and all of a sudden it looked like was this going to be a route? Was this going to be a route for the Brewers? And the pitcher um, um, Fat, who had pitched well down the stretch, pretty much got shelled. He didn't make it out of the third inning. Let up seven hits, three earned runs, and then came the Diamondbacks bullpen. Mantifly, Castro, Nelson, Thompson, Ginkle, Seawald. Not exactly a murderer's row of well-known relievers. But do you know what they did? They did the job. And I'll tell you who also did the job. The defense for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Brilliant play by, uh, yeah, um, Evan Longoria. Same dude. He got a hit today, but he also made a dynamic catch. And there was this acrobatic uh, play thrown at second base, which was at first called safe. And then the video review showed, no, 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 they got him. They got him. And so the D-backs defense, the D-backs bullpen, and then the bats. Now, the Corbin Carroll hit a two-run home run off of Burns in the third inning, suddenly turning all the momentum, which was, remember, it was 3 nothing in the third inning. The starting pitcher was getting shelled. Everything was looking Milwaukee's way. Carroll hit a two-run home run. So I'm like, ooh, it's a one-run game. It's not going to be a blowout. Very next batter, Cattell Marte, hits a home run. Boom. Did I mention boom? Suddenly, it's a tie game. And then the very next inning, in the fourth, Montero came up. Uh, uh, not sorry, I'm not sorry, not Montero. Moreno came up. And Gabriel Moreno came up and hit the go-ahead home run. Did a wonderful bat flip. The defense took over the next inning. The bullpen took over. And then in the bottom of the, on the top of the ninth inning, they they almost got, Christian Walker almost got a three-run home run. It turned into a two-run double. And uh, Seawald got the final three outs. And suddenly the Diamondbacks had doubled up the Brewers at home. And so... What well, looked like a really unfavorable matchup. But then again, you know, going into this, both the Phillies and the Brewers looked pretty strong going into it. So it was a bit of a coin toss. But, you know, Burns is a wonderful pitcher, but Burns, Burns didn't have his day. 
Burns did not have his day. I mean, he pitched four innings and let up four runs. That's a nine ERA. You can't have that, not from your ace. And so the Diamondbacks have found themselves in a position where they can potentially take care of business on Wednesday afternoon. And they're going to give the ball to Zach Gallen, who was a Cy Young contender for a giant chunk of the season. Now Peralta is pitching for the Milwaukee Brewers, and Peralta has had moments of absolute brilliance in the regular season. This should be a terrific pitching matchup. But I guess in some ways this is one of those instances where you say, hey, there's an advantage in pitching your best pitcher in game two. Because right now, even though they didn't get a good uh, fat, didn't do a great job. Is that how you pronounce his name? P F A A D D two. It's one of those weird. It doesn't matter. He didn't. He, he didn't get out of the third. But now they're up 2-0 and they're handing the ball to their Cy Young contender. That's a good place to be. That's a very good place to be. And quite frankly, it's a good place to be if you are a Diamondbacks fan. We all know uh, Miller Thomas, who's with me every week, is a diehard. Arizona Diamondbacks fan. He is the host of Locked on Diamondbacks. And we also know Chuck Freeman, who has been the new host. He's done a terrific job this year with Locked on Brewers. What we're going to do, we're going to, he- we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to hear from Chuck Freeman, who's going to give us his thoughts on what he was expecting from this team and what he was expecting going into the postseason. And keep in mind, this was recorded just before the series began. So we're going to see what his thoughts were for the, for the season and his predictions for the postseason and basically what he was looking for altogether. As promised, here's Chuck Freeman of Lockdown Brewers. Hi, everybody. Chuck Freeman here, Locked On Brewers. Seven burning questions regarding the Milwaukee Brewers as we head into the postseason. Did I expect the Milwaukee Brewers to be here? And what were my expectations? What are they now heading into the postseason? I expected this to be a two-team race in the NL Central. Never in my wildest mind did I ever expect the Brewers to be getting to the 90 wins. I thought the winner of this division was going to be 85 wins. And the Brewers would get in maybe as a wild card or even challenge the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals never were part of this picture. And the Brewers, again, I I thought at best a wild card, possibly challenging for the division title. But I looked at this as the Cardinals division to to win, and certainly they didn't do it. And here we are, uh, 20 games over the 500 mark or so, 90 wins. And my expectations in the last month, have moved up a little higher because of the way the team is playing. Yeah, they were meandering around the 500 mark for most of June and July, a couple of games over, and then August hit, and they began to pull away from the pack a little bit, and their offense came around. And now my expectations, you know what, lined in back of my wall here, if you can see all these pictures, there's it's a wall of disappointment of Milwaukee Brewer history, 54 years of falling short of expectations. And hopes. So my hopes go into the postseason. I just want to see them get to the World Series. Obviously win the World Series, but we've been the one World Series in a franchise history. And that was like when I was a little kid. So does that really even count? I'm sure it does. But I'm expecting this team, they could either flop out in the first round or go to the World Series. You just don't know what Brewer team is going to show up sometimes. What players, what batters are hot coming into the postseason? Well, a couple of guys have been carrying this team. Will Contreras, who coming into the season, not a lot of offensive expectations out of him, but he's their offensive MVP. He can't take his bat out of the lineup. If he's not catching, which he does most of the time, and then he'll, he'll, Victor Caratini will spare him. But then Contreras has got a bat in the two hole and DH. Again, he's hitting so well, you want to give him a day off, but you just can't afford to because this lineup isn't very good. Now, the offense has been better since the middle of August, but Mark Kent has been such a great addition to this team. Maybe one of the best midseason pickups, trading deadline pickups in baseball. Wasn't a high-profiled one, but certainly one that's worked out. He's had some great numbers and come through a ton of clutch times for the Milwaukee Brewers this year. The depth of this starting rotation, I love it. It's the fortress of this team. 
they got three guys who you'd stack up against anybody in Major League Baseball. You start off with Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, and then you go to Freddie Peralta. Three guys there who have put up terrific numbers and can have mounted up very high. So many quality starts for this team. Woodruff missed most of the season. He came back and he acted like he never took a break. And he was so good. Now he struggled this last Saturday. And the worry there is his velocity is down. Corbin Burns, since July, has been like the Corbin Burns, the Cy Young season of a few years ago. He's been that good. And Freddie Peralta has pitched like an ace. And then you look at four or five, Wade Miley and Adrian Hauser. Certainly those guys could be upper echelon in the uh, in many starting rotations around Major League Baseball, the way they've pitched this year. But unfortunately for one of those guys, they're going to have to do long relief, maybe both guys. But I love one, two, and three. I'll stack those guys up against anybody in baseball. Even the Arizona Diamondbacks with Zach Gallen and company. But their, their pitching death at the starting rotation, really good. Uh, your My bullpen, the Brewer bullpen, fantastic. Devin Williams, one of the best closers in baseball. Now, Piamps, his setup guy, he has lost some velo recently, uh, leaving balls over the plate. Arm angle has changed a little bit. There's a little bit of a concern there. Eighth inning, it can't be leaving balls over the plate at 90 miles an hour, 91 miles an hour in Major League Baseball, especially in the postseason. So Piamps, the eighth inning guy, a little bit of a concern. But girls coming off the injured list, hopefully for the postseason. But everybody else, Hobie Milner, Abner Uribe, a future closer in Major League Baseball throws 101. Long as he doesn't lose control and he finds the plate, all good. I, I, the starting rotation and the bullpen, never an issue. Now, the problem is, the concern I have is, hopefully these guys aren't running out of gas for the postseason. And that's the team's biggest strength, the bullpen and starting pitching. The bullpen and starting pitching are so good. And I think that's what's going to have to carry this team. Because offensively, you just never know who or when they're going to show up because they've gone through some offensive slides this year. And then they've come up and put up 12 runs in an inning like they did a, a week ago, Friday, just a, bizarre because they'll, they'll not hit for three or four days and then put up a big crooked number in an inning. But the, the pitching has got to be there. And like I said, hopefully the rotation and the bullpen won't be running out of gas because they need the back end of that bullpen and that starting rotation. There is no margin of error for this team and the greatest strength, the bullpen and starting pitching. Now, what has hurt them in the past, they've got the post, they got the postseason play 2021, 2019, even the wild card game, 2018, losing to the Dodgers in the postseason in NLCS. They ran out of offense. The pitching was there, just couldn't score any runs. That is what concerns me about this team. Got to be able to put up some runs, got to be consistent, but I know how it is in postseason. Pressure's on. And again, sometimes this team, it's been a trade of these guys for the last several years. Changed some of the players in the team, and it still exists. The Milwaukee Brewers had this ability, this inane ability to go through deep freezes. And that's my biggest concern with this team. That's my biggest concern. Don't go into a postseason funk. Because the pitching, if it lets up just a little, could be a short series. The series could end in the wild card round. Again, it could end in a World Series. You just don't know with these guys. 2021, I expected further than the division series, but they ran into a, a very good Atlanta bullpen, and the Brewers dried up offensively. How far from the, can this team go? I really do believe in my heart of hearts that this is a team that could go to the World Series. But again, I would not be stunned if they busted out in, in two games in the wild card. Craig Council is manager of the year. Major League Baseball. He took a team that didn't have high, a lot of high expectations. Had won 90, 90 games. It's not a it's not a team full of household names here in Wisconsin. Christian Yelich. You can go right down. I think many neighborhoods in Milwaukee and say, list me twelve guys of the Milwaukee Brewer. They'd be like, huh? Twenty eighteen team. You couldn't do that with twenty eleven, two thousand eight, certainly nineteen eighty two. But this team, I think. Fans have come out, but I think they have not yet identified with this Milwaukee Brewer team. But maybe that's still to come in the postseason. They had 36,000 out there on Tuesday night when they were trying to clinch and lost, and then the big crowd coming up uh, last Wednesday when they did clinch when they when the Cubs had lost in Atlanta. But this team could go to Game 7 of the World Series 
or could bow out in the first two games. Their last three times they've played the Dodgers, they've lost. They lost uh, in, in Los Angeles. They got they played a horrible series in Los Angeles in mid-August, and they got swept in that series. That still hangs in my mind. If the Brewers get by this wild card, they got to go out to L.A., who beat them in 2011 or 2018 and beat them a short time ago. And the Brewers just don't seem to be able to hit Kershaw in the postseason. But let's get by the wild card first. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's an extended amount of stay in the postseason because when postseason is good in Milwaukee, it's great. It's been here infrequently in my lifetime, more so here in the last six years. They've had winning teams. They've gone to the playoffs in five of the last six years, but they have not won a division title since 20, where they have not won a playoff series since 2018 when they beat Colorado in the NLDS. So they've gone to the postseason but they have not had a lot of postseason success. Maybe that'll change. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. So long, everybody. Well, Chuck, you were worried if they were going to run out of gas. Maybe Corbin Burns did. Well, when we come back, we're going to hear a little bit from our buddy Miller Thomas and his victorious Arizona Diamondbacks. So the D-backs doubled up the Milwaukee Brewers. Who The D-backs were down 3 nothing, wound up winning 6-3. to three. What did our buddy Miller Thomas have to say about his snakes? Miller Thomas, host of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, here with a little get-to-know-the-D-backs as they head into the postseason against the Milwaukee Brewers. And the first thing you should know about this D-backs team, before this season started, I thought a successful D-backs season would have just been finish the year with at least 80 wins. I want at least a 500 record. Just end the season with that win-loss record. I want an 8 as the first number. Anything below that, I would have been disappointed with. D-backs end the season with 84 wins. They hit my prediction, and now they're headed to the postseason. So, What should my expectations level be for the D-backs now that they're headed to the postseason? Because I just wanted them to finish with at least 80 wins, but I didn't even expect them to be a wildcard team. From the playoff standpoint, I didn't make any predictions about that. I just wanted this D-backs team to finish with at least 80 wins. And now they have enough wins to make it to the postseason. So how should we recalibrate our expectations now for the D-backs? Well, I think... This is still a team that's not ready to win the World Series, but I do think they could win a wild card round, and that's kind of where I stop. I think this D-backs team should handle business against the Brew Crew, win the wild card round, and then I think ultimately they probably lose in the next series to the LA Dodgers. For the players they need to watch out for at the plate, the three players that are coming off really good Septembers, Gabriel Moreno, 300 average, 800 OPS in the month of September. Carroll, over 300 average. He has like a 900 OPS in the month of September. Same with Kittel Marte. Those are the three players that you have to watch out for at the plate if you're a Brewers fan because those three guys really help carry the offense down the stretch. This team's uh, starting rotation depth, as it currently stands, not the strongest in Major League Baseball, admittedly. The D-backs just DFA'd Zach Davies this past week, or sometime last week. They, of course, DFA'd Madison Bumgarner at the start of the year. They've lost Dre Jameson to a torn UCL. They've lost Tommy Henry. So when you look at this D-backs rotation now, it's Zach Gallen, it's Merrill Kelly, and then it's a pretty big drop-off after that. You're going to have Brandon Fott as your rookie starting in game one of the wild card round, actually. And then after that, it's really anybody's guess of who the number four and number five starter is. Maybe it's a Ryan Nelson. Maybe just go with a bullpen game and start like a Bryce Jarvis or a Slake Coney. Like D backs have options after their one, two, three, Gallon, Kelly, and Fott. We just don't know what those options are exactly and who's actually filling out the rest of the D backs rotation. So, in terms of depth, the D backs have dudes after a Gallon, Kelly. I just don't know how trustworthy those guys are uh is this bullpen good enough to win the world series uh i guess i guess technically if you're in the postseason any bullpen is good enough to win the world series but this d-backs bullpen finished the year 18th in major league baseball in bullpen era and i actually said before the year like if the d-back just finished with a league average bullpen i would be happy 
D-backs did exactly that. So I'm kind of happy where, where the D-backs bullpen finished. But if you have Gallon and Merrill Kelly starting, if those two guys can go seven or eight innings, I mean, that would help out this D-backs bullpen a lot. Ideally, you want your starting pitching to at least get you to the seventh. Once you get to the seventh inning, it's either going to be like Kyle Nelson, Sal Frank, or Thompson out there in the seventh. We know it would be Kevin Ginkle in the eighth. And then we know it's Paul Seawald in the ninth. Uh, the bullpen is always going to be a toss up. The seventh inning is going to be scary, but if your starters can give you seven innings, I think you could really trust Kevin Ginkle and Paul Seawald in the eighth and ninth respectively to shut it down. But I do think the D backs greatest strength is, is controlling the bases from both sides of the plate. When I look at this D backs team, um, they are great at creating havoc on the bases when I look at this D back team in terms of speed, finished second in the National League in stolen bases. They're great at the extra base taken. They're great at run, run scoring percentages. Like in terms of offense and base stealing and moving runners, like the D backs are elite at everything. They're great at uh, sacrifice hits too. So the D backs are really good offensively at controlling the base pass. They're also doing it on the defensive side of the ball too, because Gabriel Moreno, well, <coughs> excuse me, one of the best. Uh, catchers behind the plate at throwing out opposing runners. Gabriel Moreno does not let anyone just get a free pass down to second, down to third base. So when you have the Carrolls, the Jake uh, McCarthy's, the Jordan Lawler's, the Alec Thomas's, all stealing a ton of bases, like that's going to be great from your offense. Moving guys up from second to third on singles and just fly balls is great for your offense. And then Gabriel Moreno really making it hesitant for opposing offenses to run and take off on you. Really good defensively. So D-backs are great at controlling both sides of the base pass. What am I most worried about, though, for my team entering the postseason? I think it just has to be overall lack of experience because there's not a lot of players on this roster that are battle-tested once you get to the postseason. Like one of those guys could have been a massive bum garner, but of course he just wasn't that good of a player, so the D-backs had to let him go. But we look at the best D-backs Position players like the Morenos, the Walkers, the Martes, the Carols, the the Alec Thomases of the world, the Zach Gallons, the Merrill Kellys, like none of these guys, like all these guys collectively, I think have like one or two like playoff series experience for like every major dude on this D-backs roster. Like I think the biggest issue is just the lack of experience. This D-backs team is just not battle tested. And look, I don't think the Brewers team is like the scariest team on paper, but this is a core when you look at that Brewers squad that have been there the last few years, right? This Brewers team is always a wild card or a division winner with the Corbin Burns, the Freddie Peraltas, the Christian Yelchis, the Willie Adamases. Like, yeah, they might not have won a World Series the past few years, but all those guys are super battle tested. All those guys have been to the playoffs multiple times. So I think lack of experience could come back to hurt this Diamondback squad. And then how far do I think this D-backs team will go in the postseason? Like I already said, I do think this D-backs team can beat this Brewers team because I think on paper, that Brewers offense isn't scary that much. You look at that lineup of after the Christian Yelchers of the world and like the William Contreras's, I don't think you're super terrified of that roster. Of course, the pitching staff is the elite best, I think, pitching ERA in the National League. But when I compare it to this D-backs team, like you got the Martes, you got the Carols, you got studs in the lineup. Like I think this D-backs lineup overall is pretty good in terms of depth. I think it could go down to six, seven, eight, and still look at quality major leaguers there. Their rotation has some question marks after the Merrill Kelly and Zach Gallon. The bullpen has some question marks, but I think this D-backs team can win this wild card round, and then I think eventually will lose in the divisional round. So I'd say the D-backs win round one and then lose in the divisional round to the L.A. Dodgers. Well, did you notice that in Millard's uh, prediction of the game, he brought up uh, Mr. Moreno a couple of times. It's like he was prescient. He knew it. He knew it was going to go on there. And look, at they got Zach Gallen going, and he's been pitching very, very well recently. So I think this looks – look, at anything can happen. I've seen Freddie Peralta is a wonderful pitcher, and he's had some outstanding outings too. But – if I were a Diamondbacks fan, I'd be waking up today feeling pretty good about things. Don't give up, Milwaukee Brewer fans. But, hey, this was a lot of fun hearing the thoughts of Chuck Freeman and the thoughts of uh, Miller Thomas. And we're going to see what happens in the game tomorrow afternoon. So check that out. Uh, by the way, we are going to be doing similar shows to this to all of the series. I'm going to give my thoughts about the games that we saw get played already. 
And then we're going to hear from the hosts of the shows, get their thoughts about the team going into it. And also tomorrow, we're going to do uh, two more shows tomorrow. We're going to wrap up the American League and National League games that took place. And we're going to hear from the hosts of Locked On Astros, Locked On Orioles, Locked On Dodgers, and Locked On Braves, whose teams are currently at home sipping down a pina colada and trying to figure out, well, do you know what? Who are we going to face? And we may know some answers going into tomorrow so uh make sure to follow uh millard at locked on diamondbacks make sure to follow chuck at locked on brewers and you can follow us at locked on mlb pods on twitter or on instagram i am your pal sully i'm at sully baseball on twitter sully baseball podcast on instagram doing a recap and a preview kind of at the same time of the brewers and the diamondback series this has been Locked on MLB for the fourth day of October 2023. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.